Well, let's look at what we've learned and let's kind of apply it again. Look what I've done here. I've given you an original function and its reciprocal. And I just want to start examining what's going to happen to this one. Well, you know the original function, y equals x. That means everything here is going to be the same. That's minus 3, minus 2, minus 1, minus a half, minus a quarter. Look how we're going strong here. Zero, a quarter, a half. Oh my goodness, one, two, three, way too easy. And look at the graph of this. Of course, we're gonna start here at zero, zero, one, one, two, two, three, three, four, four, blah, 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 all the way through here, even the quarters and the halves. And we're gonna draw a beautiful line that goes right through here. Never seen anything like that before, right? Okay, now here's where the fun starts though. The fun starts when you start reciprocating it. So every one of these values here has to be a reciprocal. Every single one. And notice how I put the negative three down here first, but now I'm just gonna put the negative in front because it means exactly the same thing. Look at this, you got negative a third, you got negative a half, reciprocal of this is negative, still negative one. Hmm, interesting how these two numbers are exactly the same. Do you remember what that's called? It's called an invariant. It's an invariant point. It's a point that does not change. Interesting. So whenever the y equals to a negative one, those will never change. Hmm. Okay. Well, let's keep on going. Let's see how, what happens later on. Reciprocal of that, that becomes minus two. Reciprocal of that becomes minus four. Wait a second. Uh-oh. What's the reciprocal of zero? Uh-oh non-permissible value you can't have that one so that's just eh, you can't have that so let's keep on going reciprocal of a quarter is four reciprocal of a half is two reciprocal of one is one. Oh, there you go you got another invariant point isn't that interesting hmm let's keep on going okay reciprocal of two is a half reciprocal of three is a third okay so let's start plotting these things Okay, how do you plot them? Of course, there's your x value at minus three. Now you're at minus a third. So minus three, which is way out here, is minus a third, which is just below this line. Interesting. At minus two, we're at minus a half. At minus two, we're about minus a half, which is here. At minus one, we're at minus one. Oh, so there's our invariant point. Look, it's a point on both graphs. Then we're going to go to minus a half. We're going to go to minus two. Minus a half is here. Minus two is about there. Interesting. Going to minus a quarter, we're going all the way down to four. So look, we're going to here. Holy smokes. Check out what we have. It comes in this way, and it just basically bends like this and starts going way out this way, which is kind of interesting. My question is then, how does this look on this side? Hmm. Well, let's keep on going. Okay. We know we can't have a zero, so we're not going to touch this. This is impossible right here. Huh. Okay. Well, let's go to this guy. We got a quarter becoming a four. A quarter becomes four. So it's going to be way up here. There's a quarter at four. Then we've got a half at two. A half at two, which is about here. There's our invariant point again. One, one, right here. Interesting, okay? The next point is gonna be out this way. It's gonna be two at a half. So one, two, there's a half. Then we're gonna to go to three, which is a third, and we're gonna keep on going to a third. So check out what this graph is gonna look like. It's really quite interesting. You're gonna start way up here, we're gonna go through that, and we're gonna go way out to here like this. So we're gonna have another bend here. So the reciprocal graph looks like it comes really, 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 really close to this line right here. Really comes close to x equaling zero, but we know x cannot equal to zero because that'll give us a non-permissible value. So we've got an actually a very, 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 very important point here. This line, you'll notice that this side of the graph will eventually get closer and closer and closer and closer, but never touch it. This side of the graph will get closer and closer and closer and never touch it. But this is a vertical line, so we have a specific name for this. We call this a vertical asymptote, VA, 
a vertical asymptote, which means the line gets really, really close to it, but never touches. And that's determined right here by your NPVs. Is that not interesting? Cool. But the other thing that we have here, which is really, really cool, is we also have a line which is going this way. That's very, very, very close. These lines, look, look at the black line. Black line gets really, really close to it, but never touches it. Look at the red line. Gets really, really close to it, but never touches it. Guess what? This guy is also going to have a specific name. This guy is actually going to be called the horizontal asymptote or what I like to call <laughs> horizontal asymptote. So you've got two different asymptotes. One of them is determined by the NPVs. How is the horizontal asymptote going to be determined? Well, you know what? You're going to have to just determine that right now graphically. As we go through these podcasts, I might give you a little bit more uh, of an insight how to determine the horizontal asymptotes. But horizontal asymptotes is something that you'll probably take up in Math 30-1 for sure.